Good morning. Welcome to our morning devotional here at JJ Good Morning. And truly another opportunity we have to learn from the Word of God, the Bible, and um, learn principles and understand the will of the Lord is uh, working and is a blessing to us. Teaching us day after day here at JJ Good Morning. Indeed, it is a privilege for us that we can look into the Word of God and learn from the Scripture and apply this as well in our daily lives. So today, um, I wish you all the best from God with His goodness and His blessing at your work, at home, with your family, and with one another here at JJ Good Morning. Let us start by having an opening prayer. Let us pray, please. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. And again, we are privileged to learn from the Scripture. Thank you, Lord, that we give importance to your word here at uh, Uniship. May it be, Father, that all of us who are listening may have that pure intent or true to our heart as well. And uh, let us continue to enjoy the blessings of your word. So that, Lord God, our life, especially, Lord God, our life as Christians, be with your blessings. And much more, Lord, we might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us here might come to understand our need of a Savior and believe Him as our Lord and Savior, Father. Bless us indeed, Lord God. This time, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage today is taken from the book of Exodus. This is in the Old Testament, starting from... uh, verse 31 to um, verse 40 of chapter 25. So that is Exodus 25, verse 31 to 40. Allow me to read first the scripture. Then you shall make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand and its base and its shaft are to be made of hammered work. Its cups, its bulbs, and its flowers shall be one piece with it. Six branches shall go out from its sides, three branches of the lampstands from its one side, and three branches of the lampstand from its other side. Three cups shall be shaped like almond blossoms in the one branch, a bulb and a flower, and three cups shaped like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bulb and a flower. So for six branches going out from the lampstand. And in the lampstand, four cups shaped like almond blossoms, its bulbs and its flowers. A bulb shall be under the first pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the second pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the third pair of branches coming out of it, for the six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their bulbs and their branches shall be one piece with it. All of it shall be one piece of hammered work of pure gold. Then you shall make its lamps seven in number, and they shall mount, mount it, its lamps so as to shed light on the space in front of it. Its snuffers and their trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made from a tallet of pure gold with all these utensils. See that you make them after the pattern for them which was shown to you on the mountain. That is the scripture passage taken from Exodus. Our daily bread is entitled, Through a New Lens. I am wearing this eyeglass that is overdue, and I need to have a new pair of these. Uh, Maybe because the situation right now uh, gives us difficulty to look for replacement. But anyway, um, there's a need of new lens for me to have a brighter vision as I look on things, as I read on words. Same thing with um, the article that is in our daily bread today for the author entitled it Through a New Lens. And he illustrated by, by this story saying, it must be amazing to look at a tree and see the individual leaves instead of just a blur of green. That was his dad said. I could not have said it better. 
I was 18 at the time and not a fan of my new need to wear glasses. But they changed the way I saw everything, making the blurry beautiful. That's how it helps you now when our eyes are, um, uh, as we get get old you now, it, it becomes dimmer sometimes and uh, we need a, a brighter vision and time would come that uh, we really need to have eyeglasses. And he was talking about uh, looking at the tree and it's not just a blur of green but when, when he put, puts on his eyeglass there is the details of individual leaves as he looks at it and then he would appreciate that when blurred things becomes beautiful and here's here's that illustrations when he said reading the scripture or reading the bible there are scripture passages or teachings from the bible certain books like what we have just read in the book of Exodus that uh, when you look at it as if you might have difficulty to understand what is in it or sometimes it becomes boring because there keeps a, a repetition of uh, what is being said and then he said those doesn't seem to be much to see like when you read about names in the Old Testament when you look at the genealogy of uh, the Bible characters repetitions of names or this person begot this person and this person begot this person this person have his son like name like this and seems to be a repetition and to some readers that gets boring but you know what when you look at that you can notice some beautiful details that reveal the beauty in what might seem to be a boring passage okay the one that we have just read here in Exodus chapter 25 okay? this is the direction of God for the building of the tabernacle and God's direction to Moses, he was very particular on what to do, what instruments to be used, what would be the measurement, what even the shape that should be done. Well, we know that God, our God, is a God of order. And he would do things for us in order. And thus we respond to him orderly as well. We make our worship to him in order. We make our approach of him in our lives in order because he is the God of order same thing that is what had happened in the tabernacle during the Old Testament as they traveled in the wilderness until they arrived later on and there was the instructions to David and Solomon to build the temple and the building of the temple also was in order in every detail that even it comes to the minute de detail of what is the measurement what are things to be used what kind of materials what kind of shape would be that's how particular God is why because he wanted his place of worship the tabernacle during this time of the Exodus to be in perfect shape because we give God the best when we worship him we give God the best when we serve him we give God the best when we offer something to Him. For if God had given the best to us, the best, best gift that we can receive from Him, this eternal life through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the best gift He had given us for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What best thing we can give to God in return? but our praises, our thanksgiving. So even with that here, what in, in the passage that we have read, it talks about the lampstand and the minute small details 
on how the lampstand that is to be used inside the tabernacle has to be shaped, has to be made, in what form, in what material, in what measurement. And that's that's the beauty well, that we can read on this passage in Exodus. God's direction for building the tabernacle, his temporary dwelling place amongst the Israelites. Uh, that when we look at it at first reading, it seems like blur or boring details. But we saw here also now when he gave direction for the lampstand that it should be hammered out of pure gold. That's the quality of the materials. He made it of pure gold. That's what I was saying a while ago. That for God, he gives the best for us and in return he deserves the best from us as well. Even the quality of the materials, he said, made it, make it of pure gold, including its base and shaft and its flowers. And the shape, huh? it says, the cups were to be shaped like almond flowers. Well, um, I haven't seen a natural almond flowers. All we used to see is, is the, the seed, the nuts, almond nuts. I haven't seen a, a natural trees and a natural flower, but it says, and they said, it's a beautiful flower. It's a beautiful flower. Maybe in the internet on images you can find that, you can search on that. But naturally, the fresh flower, I haven't seen it. But it's beautiful. And God would give that instruction that the shape of the lampstand there is, there should be that shape, shape like an almond flowers. Because almond trees are breathtaking, they said. And God would incorporate that some natural beauty into his tabernacle. God would incorporate this natural beauty into his tabernacle. So we we could see here, we could learn how particular God is when it comes to things that belongs to him. That is why later on, even in sacrifices, God would demand the best offering, spotless, pure white animals without defect animals be given to him as an offering because that is the best that we can give to God during their time in the Old Testament. And today, as we serve God, as we give him our praises, our thanksgiving, our offering, our lives, give the best to God, the best that you can do for God. Give it. Give it now. And also, not only in the Old Testament, but uh, even the Apostle Paul, who have written Romans. And he said here in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature are seen and understood in creation. So we know that God is a spirit. That's why we worship Him and we serve Him in spirit. Yet, spirit he may be, there are attributes that would make us come to see and understand who God is. And he would use his creation, the beauty of his creation, to express who he is. Right? <clears throat> his eternal power in creation that could be seen when he said, let there be light, that is how powerful God is. When he formed us, no? even the animals and all of his creation. He is an omnipotent God, all-powerful God. And his divine nature could also be seen in his creation. That is why if you want to see the beauty of God's creation, sometimes we need to have a break, go out of town. Where you could see mountains, you could see trees go by the sea and see and observe the beauty of the sea, of the fish and everything that God had created, that God had made. Truly, it is beautiful. And that would describe the divine nature of our God who is our Creator. And we could see and understand who He is in His creation. That is what is being said here in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature had been clearly seen 
being understood from what has been made from what has been made so there there you are we could see that we have a creator God he created it no and to see God's beauty sometimes we have to look at creation and what might seem like an interesting scripture passage in the Bible but with a new lens it means with, with a new perspective with a right perspective of looking and understanding the Word of God we can learn from it so let this be our attitude let this be our character every time that we are to look into the Word of God may that be in your personal Bible reading or may that be in our morning devotional every morning let us set our hearts, our minds, and let us ask God that He will give us wisdom, that He will give us understanding of His Word in order for us to grasp the teaching of the Lord and the blessing of His Word. Have that new lens to see the will of God, the working of God, the purpose of God in His Word. The questions, as we end here in our daily bread, it says, how can you look at scripture in a new way to see God's beauty in it? We are being asked here this morning. How can you look at the Word of God? How can you look at the Bible in a new way to see God's beauty in it? Maybe there are some of us here today that the Word of God is not that important yet to you. Maybe you are joining the morning devotional because we are being required by the office. I'm sorry to tell that, but let that, let that not be our attitude. Let it be that we are privileged and have the opportunity to learn the Word of God, to understand the Scripture, and to know the Word of God as well. And so let us love the Word of God. Okay, let us have the Word of God. Another question. How has God's beautiful creation drawn you closer to Him? Not only in what He is telling us or teaching us from His Word, the Bible, but also in the beauty of His creation around us. That when you look at the beauty of the sky, the beauty of the stars at night, the moon, when there's full moon, the birds, the trees, the flowers, the nature around us. When you go by the ocean or the beach, they enjoy that sunset, enjoying the sunrise in the morning. When you look at the aquarium, or under the sea when you go diving you could see the beauty of what is created under the sea how do you respond to God with that respond to God with praises with thanksgiving with worship let that be a new lens that we could see in our lives applying that to our lives today we are still here alive and kicking breathing still have work, still have blessings. We can still do things amidst these difficult times. In all this, this is because of the blessings of God, the working of God to His children. Look at that with a perspective of appreciating the God, of celebrating the goodness of God, and of responding to all these blessings that God has been doing to you, to your life, to our lives. May God bless us all indeed. Good morning and God bless you all.